There's never been a better time to have Sirius XM. With over 140 channels in your vehicle, your all-access trial includes more than ever before to enjoy online, on your phone, or at home. Create your own ad-free personalized stations powered by Pandora. Hear ad-free extra channels and enjoy favorite shows with Sirius XM Video On Demand. What you love is on now. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's TGIF Friday. We made it, y'all. Weekend is ahead of us. Hopefully, everybody's got some great plans for the weekend. I know I do. A um, couple weeks of summer left before the kids get back to school, so we're going to make the most of it. Having said that, we're going to end the week strong because we're going to be talking about something that is just absolutely iconic in the car audio industry. It's a, it's a theme and a unit, more specifically, that's uh, been around since the dawn of time by audio control. It's called the epicenter. And you're thinking, why on earth are we spending a whole show talking about something that's been around for so long? Well, that's why you're tuning in to find out. But before we get going, of course, we're going to have to invite our friends at Gemsend, more specifically, Mr. Dave Singh, who will be accompanying us on this episode. What's going on, Dave? Hey, Ben. Good to see you. Friday. Friday, buddy. Friday, Friday, Friday. Friday. But uh, not, you know, the weekend, of course, is very exciting. We have a whole, I know our family's got a lot of stuff planned out. But um, when I saw this come up on the schedule, I was like, really? They're going to be talking about Epicenter? Can you give us a little bit of uh, insight as to what this, uh, what we're going to be talking about today with uh, the guys at Audio Control? Well, I think everybody has heard of the Epicenter. It's been around for a long time. Uh, I, geez, I, I can think back of being 15 years old, working in a drive-thru and watching this Trans Am come through with a board along the back seat, high phonics amplifiers, 15-inch red line speakers, and, you know, this epicenter. And, you know, it, I mean, that was 15. I'm, you know, like 19 now, but it, it feels like a long time ago. <laughs> um, yes. But, you know, the cool thing about that, pieces it's been around for such a long time and back then it cured problems that were different than the problems that we we have now back then you know a lot of its initial purposes were really to help restore lost bass in music that was missing bass like 70s rock and that sort of thing Uh, but in today's vehicles you know when you're using sources such as this as your you know music source there's compression going on there's other things that are happening And Epicenter, you know, is a a great way of restoring that. Plus, without stealing the thunder, I mean, we've reached a milestone with Epicenter, and we've got a really cool thing to talk about later on. So um, not only is it cool for, you know, uh, making the overall music more enjoyable, you know, everybody loves a little bit more bass. Uh, Perhaps you want to, you know, make your woofers go a little bit nutty and, and, and go overkill. I mean, sure, you could use it for that, but... You know, if you really want to dial in a little bit more emphasis in the bass and, you know, you're trying to boost signals that just aren't there, an epicenter will cure the problem. But Matt can tell you all about how that thing works when we get them on in a little bit. That's amazing. I mean, I think there's going to be a story here. I I sense it. I kind of feel it. There's there's something going on, and I'm sure uh, Matt's going to be able to uh, enlighten us with that. So what do you say we bring him on? And uh, we'll do that right now. So all the way from the West Coast, all the way out West, our good friend and trainer, Matthew Palumbo from Audio Control. Welcome to CMA Connected once again, Matt. Good morning, guys. How are you? I'm doing hey, super well. I like the schnazzy setup here. This must be at Audio Control Central, some <laughs> studio you've made up. Yes, this is uh, kind of a new studio space we built over the summer. Uh, obviously, like everybody else, been doing a lot more video work and uh, streaming and you know Zooming and all that stuff over the last uh, nine months, 12 months or so. And so we finally uh, built a dedicated kind of studio space down here at Audio Control HQ uh, here in the beautiful rainy Pacific Northwest rainforest, um, although it's about 90 degrees today, so it's a little bit yeah. warm here. But You know, uh, it's yeah. not hot in August. Yeah, know. good morning from the West Coast. There you go, there you go. Well, thank you for waking up for us. How's that? Thank of you. Of course, of course. So you you heard us our little preamble here. I was a little bit, you know, hmm, epicenter. I mean, I, I, I obviously uh, a, a, a huge, iconic 
product in the history of car audio. I, you know, Dave shared with us a little uh, personal story of when he, what he remembers. I remember as a kid walking to my first, you know, sound off competitions and looking at the truck, checking out the cool, you know, the giant amplifiers that existed back yep. then. And these yeah, ridiculously big <laughs> huge, huge over the top, you know, band pass enclosures. And, and sure enough, there would always be this unit on the back that didn't match anything in the, in the truck. <laughs> So it's own, its own thing, its own color. And mm -hmm. uh, I didn't really know what it was at first, but I, I knew just from the systems that I've seen and the type of competitors that were using it, um, that it was important, right? Um, yep. Later in life and in this in this uh, voyage I've had, I, I've come to realize what it does, you know, why it was important and, and sure. the service and the purpose that it serves. So I'm curious today, Matt, for you to shed some light on, on why rehashing this conversation about the epicenter. Yeah. That's a that's a couple of really good points there. And so basically what's going on with the epicenter is there's a couple of exciting things happening in the world of, of base and epicenter stuff um, right now and a little bit later this summer and this year. So uh, one of the big exciting things is, uh, well, let me back up a little bit. The audio control epicenter came out in the late 70s, early 80s, if you can believe it. So the epicenter has been around longer than I've been alive. <laughs> Wow. So if but you're like that, 17, uh, no? doesn't make you feel old, I don't know what will, right? I don't know. So, um, you're 17, aren't you? <laughs> if Dave's 19, yeah. you can't yeah, be I, 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 Exactly. I'm if Dave's 19 or 18, 80s. I'm like 12, right? So, um, <laughs> <laughs> so the epicenter has been around since, you know, some of the early days of car audio. And basically there's an interesting story with the backstory of the epicenter and where it came from. Um, it's quick. So I'll share it real quick. The epicenter was actually devised as a home product originally, and it was called the phase coupled activator. It's a very star Wars sounding that very like flux capacitor. Exactly. Right. It's a very, uh, very dramatic name. And uh -huh. what it was made for was in the home audio world back in the 70s, you had um, all of these records that when they were mastered and pressed, they would actually master out some of the bass. And the reason they would master out some of the bass out of these records was because it used to make the needle skip. And hi-fi enthusiasts, of course, had separate components. They didn't have a big wooden console stereo with speakers built into their record player. That was for your average Joe. So the, you know, the consumers that were more of an enthusiast and really wanted that bass back that was mastered out of their recordings got what was called a phase coupled activator. And it would put the bass back into these recordings where it was missing. And somebody here at Audio Control decided, you know, that would be really cool in a car. And that is what gave birth to the epicenter, which is pretty cool. It's a neat story, I think. Totally makes so, sense, especially the timing of it all. Absolutely. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it really does. Um, so then, uh, you know, years down the line, of course, there's been lots and lots of different reasons for uh, epicenters to be around. Uh, enthusiasts love them because, like Dave mentioned, who doesn't want more bass, right? Everybody likes bass. And if you can add something to your system that gives you more bass without replacing your uh, woofer or your amplifier or rebuilding a bigger speaker box or anything like that, uh, you know, why wouldn't you do it, right? If you could spend a couple hundred bucks and get this magic little box that gave you much more bass output, most guys are going to go for that. So mm -hmm. the epicenter has been popular for a lot of reasons uh, over the years, but the reason I bring up part of the history of it and how long we've been making it is because we're hitting a milestone uh, really any day now. Um, we expected it to be the middle of this summer. We've been shipping epicenters like gangbusters trying to get these things out the door. They're still a very popular item for us. One of our best selling products to this day. Uh, and we are going to move the one millionth epicenter off the assembly line uh, here, wow. like I said, any day now. A million. Wild, right? One million yeah. epicenters. So, um, who sold, so a, who sold a million of anything? You know, that's, that's <laughs> right. That's incredible in itself, right? Yeah, I mean, a million of any product is pretty incredible. Right. Um, this a is million of specific product too. It, uh, absolutely, and a million of any electronics product, especially. I mean, most electronic products don't have a very long lifespan of production, right? I mean, you figure they're only going to be around for so long. Most electronics kind of come in and out of style or in and out of, you know, usable life uh, pretty quickly. And then once it's over, it's over, right? So in this case, we have something that's really kind of stood the test of time. And that's why when we talk about it being the world's best selling processor, 
in car audio, it, it really is actually the world's best selling processor. Now, most people don't think of it as a DSP or anything like that, but it is a base processor, it is a digital signal processor in, in a way, right? So it is literally the world's best selling DSP. It is, and maybe one of the first DSP units. If, yeah, it's a great way to think of it. Mm -hmm. Very cool. So with with the one millionth epicenter coming out, um, there's a couple of things that are going to come along with that. Uh, one of those is that we are going to be um, releasing very soon here and start taking pre-orders for very soon, uh, something called the epicenter limited edition. And so, you know, whether it's your first epicenter and you're just hearing about it, or this will be your, you know, 10th epicenter, it's going to be a very cool piece to have. And I think Ben has an image of that for I, me. I literally just got that in my email and i awesome. just queued it up as you were speaking. cool so let's check this out you guys really held to the last second for this hold on a second <laughs> <laughs> So boom, the, uh, there you go. There is the limited edition. So it is a very cool looking piece for anybody who's ever read one of our manuals. You might recognize a little guy on there. His name Dude, is Spike. That guy is giving me the feels right now. Right? Yep. A little bit of retro, a wow, little bit of throwback. Oh, throwback right there. Yep. Yep. So with the uh, with Spike on there, and it says one million strong, limited edition. We went for kind of a blacked out look. Um, it's not our typical powder coated black steel. It's actually a really cool black brushed aluminum. It's kind of hard to tell in the image, but it's a black brushed aluminum. It has a black silk screen on it, so it's very stealthy. And then uh, what you see that appears to be white in this image is actually laser etched. So not only are they laser etched um, with the uh, Epicenter logo and the audio control logo and that sort of thing, they are also individually numbered. So when we say limited edition, these are not just a limited edition, they're actually a limited run as well. It's a 5,000 piece limited run, once they're gone, they're gone, that's it. And uh, it's gonna be pretty slick. We also um, did a few other cosmetic changes. The LEDs that normally flash orange up in the corner every time the, the base hits have been changed to blue. The power LED has also been changed to blue. Um, and if you crack open your Epicenter Limited Edition, which people often do to change the little settings jumpers inside. We even went so far as to make the PC board a black PC board with a white silk screen. So it's got a very unique look to it. I got to ask you, Matt, um, when do you guys figure you're going to start to ship that? So we're going to start taking pre-orders for it here uh, towards the end of this month. Um, I think the 23rd is the official date that we're going to start taking pre-orders. And then shipping time on these, we're hoping to have these out if everything goes right, uh, like we hope it does. We're hoping to start shipping these hopefully like late September, early October, something like that. I know up in Canada here, we've secured about 200 of them. I mean, obviously that 5,000 is worldwide and, you know, our population is only like this, but, um, you know, I know I'll be one of the first guys just to get one to hang it on the wall just because I think yeah. it's such a cool piece. You know, for, for me, the, the epicenter brings back a lot of cool memories and, and it will be cool to just uh, to have one of those things, uh, you know. I, I kind of like the treatment that Matt's go, got going on with that audio control logo on the wall with the backlit LED. <laughs> right so get one of these on the board of the back yeah. of the LED. that'd be a nice addition to my studio right here <laughs> yeah that would be very very cool i like it there's a lot of guys actually that are just saying they want one to hang on their wall or put on their desk in their office or something like that ben i thought you were gonna say uh you like the treatment with um spike on the uh, epicenter because <laughs> Because Spike is a real old school uh, symbol of audio control from years back. I haven't seen him in a long time, so kind of cool to see yep. him back on one of the one of the products. Yep, we actually Absolutely. have a Spike mascot here in the building, so there is an actual Spike over in uh, the the main office over there. Uh, I'll have to snap a picture of him for you guys sometime. But um, yeah, Spike is in the building. Uh, they will also each come with a like letter of authenticity or certificate of authenticity um, that is i believe signed by spike if i'm not mistaken so wow. should be pretty cool look at that now matt, matt any um other than the cosmetic and the special leds and mm -hmm. like you said the motherboard and all that any feature or special feature set or anything at all or is it really just with this um, one we really we really wanted it to 
to still be a traditional concert series epicenter. So as far as functionality and sound goes, it is literally the exact same as a standard epicenter. It is just cosmetic changes. Um, and we wanted to do that on purpose. You know, we wanted to make this an epicenter that worked the same as the epicenter people remember from five years ago, 20 years ago, whatever the case may be. And the epicenter has gone through some, you know, revisions over time, getting smaller, getting sleeker, that sort of thing. Um, but as far as functionality goes, it's always kind of maintained that same sound. And we didn't want to mess with that for the limited edition. Um, but that does bring me to something that we are going to uh, mess with a little bit and do something special. And that is we have a uh, product release following that Epicenter limited edition. Uh, right after those are basically uh, released, we also have a new product coming called the Epicenter Micro. And that's a pretty exciting piece. Uh, I've actually got one sitting right here that we can talk about. So very, very excited for this one. Before we get into that, because I don't yeah. want to get sidetracked, is I... I have run into situations where dealers have contacted me and said that they are experiencing issues on some of the newer vehicles where they're just not getting bass, you know? Mm -hmm. So we know that Epicenter was great in restoring bass where it was missing on, you know, recorded tracks and that sort of stuff. But what if, what if the bass was there on the recorded track, but all of a sudden the factory audio system is now removing it? Maybe you can shed a little bit of light of what's going yeah. on or what you guys are seeing. That's a great point. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because that's something that as a trainer, when I travel around and I talk to different stereo shops and I go in and I do these trainings and things, um, you know, there's always a, a little bit of something there when I mention the epicenter. One, one of a few things happens. When I mention it to a dealer, they either say, oh yeah, we used to sell those back in the day. We haven't really had a lot of use for them recently. Um, it's a cool product. We just don't sell that many of them. Or you run into the guys that say, oh yeah, we sell them all the time. Our customers love them. You know, there's kind of kind of two camps there. Um, the the reason that I get a lot of times too is guys go, well, why are we spending kind of like Ben brought up this morning uh, when we started? You know, why are we spending time on a product that is you know 30 years old or more, 40 years old, whatever? Um, and the reason for that is that the epicenters remained popular for a long time, uh, but there's a few different reasons. Uh, that you guys kind of alluded to earlier that have kept it popular. You know, it used to be, um, like I think Dave mentioned there, that, you know, you needed an epicenter because maybe the music you were listening to just didn't have the bass that you wanted it to. If you're listening to classic rock or, well, what would now be classic rock, but uh, pretty current music back then, you know, something from the 70s or 80s that just doesn't have a lot of bass in it. Or maybe the genre of music you listen to doesn't have a lot of bass in it. A lot of um, Hispanic music and Banda music and a lot of that stuff just doesn't have much below about 100 hertz or so, you know? Um, and so that's the main reason guys think of when they think of using an epicenter. And those are very valid reasons to use an epicenter. They're still a perfectly good reason to use one, and they work great for that. But there's a new kind of reason and what's kind of had a resurgence in epicenters recently that Dave alluded to. And that is that we're now just seeing vehicles that don't have any base because of the factory head unit. So whereas you had vehicles that um, have base roll off, which is what our AccuBase feature is meant to uh, kind of combat. So if you're using something like a LC2i, let's say, uh, you know, the popular feature, what made the LC2i so great is that it had AccuBase built into it. And AccuBase was made to help compensate for base roll off. So as you increase volume, the base plateaus or the base rolls off as you increase the volume, something like that. That's what AccuBase was made to fix. But now we're seeing these vehicles where they don't have any base at all. For example, um, I have ran into several Hondas where uh, base model Honda, like Accords and things like that. And I'm talking pretty late model, like 18, 19, somewhere in there and newer. We've run into vehicles where they have a permanent high pass filter. So that vehicle literally just has no information below about 70 hertz. It has a permanent high pass filter. And that's going to sound crazy to some of you guys watching this. But if you've run into one of these cars, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. And that is, it doesn't matter what the volume is set at. It doesn't matter what source you're listening to. It doesn't matter how you tune the EQ or if you disable the ANC mics or add a DSP. It, it doesn't matter because that radio... Uh, is not putting out to anything below about 70 hertz or so. And so all the EQ and DSP and whatever in the world 
is not going to help because there's just nothing there. And so that's where an epicenter really comes into play and can make those vehicles sound good again. Um, or as we say, make good sound great, right? And that's audio control's whole motto. So we can take a car like a Honda like that, that doesn't have any base information below about 70 hertz. And we add something like an epicenter to it. The epicenter is now going to make that vehicle have base down to 35 hertz because the way an epicenter works is it looks at what the lowest current base frequencies are. What's the lowest base note that's coming through on the signal path? And it's going to basically digitally restore base one octave below. So if you've got one of these Hondas that only has base down to 70 hertz, now that car has base down to 35 hertz. So now it has some of that great low base that shakes the whole vehicle and you can you know, feel in your gut. Um, now that car sounds the way that you would expect it to. And Honda is just one example. We're seeing this in Jaguars, Land Rovers, Range Rovers, uh, Hondas. We're starting to see it in some more domestic vehicles too, like Ford GM vehicles, that sort of thing. So we're hearing you know, kind of reports of it from all over the place as far as uh, year make and model and that sort of thing. So if you are uh, somebody that works in a shop and you're watching this, if you haven't run into one of these vehicles yet, you're going to, I promise you, you will. Uh, and I don't think it's gonna become less popular. I think it's gonna become more prevalent in factory radios. So, so I mean, what you're ex explaining there, Matthew, it, it becomes more of a solutions OEM integration kind of piece right absolutely by being mm -hmm. able to not just restore you're now adding base that of base that yep. wasn't even there to begin with um and so as i hear you talk about this i'm going to ask dave a question it sounds like this is a unit that you should have pretty much on any system because if you listen to a diverse selection of music wouldn't this assist on those genres of music like matt had made re reference to that are weak in bass uh, i i agree and it could you know can also come in handy in different uh, formats that we're not even thinking about. Let's say you're listening to, uh, you know, some sort of streaming audio, you know, where, whether it's Apple CarPlay, uh, you know, where the compression could be different, you know, uh, it could be satellite radio, it could be all that type of stuff. And, you know, sometimes listening to the same song on those different formats can sound dramatically different. And, mm -hmm. you know, bass is probably the most enjoyable part of listening to that, that music. And, you know, when for some reason it's missing, it really takes away from, from from the experience. So yeah, I would I would highly recommend every audio system, you know, have an epicenter because um, you know the, the beauty of it, the way that it works, and the way it looks at the harmonics of the music to analyze and create or restore that bass, it's very natural sounding. Yeah, you can mm -hmm. dial it dial it up and really beef it up and because there's a, a knob, right? right? There's a it. knob. There's a knob, right? Okay. Yes, it, it's yes. adjustable. Yeah, so you yeah, can. That's <clears throat> Go ahead, Sorry, Matt. I was going to say that's that's the thing that a, a lot of times I think people disregard uh, or don't understand with the epicenters. They go, well, you know, I don't listen to that type of music, so I don't need one. And that's just not true. Uh, it can make any music more enjoyable. I mean, um, are you going to need it for every single song if you have an aftermarket radio and you listen to modern pop and hip hop? Maybe not. But maybe you listen to that song and like Dave said, maybe you're listening to that song uh, via a streaming service and, you know, it just doesn't sound as good as it did when you heard it at home uh, on your high res player or whatever it was. And now you get in your car and you're streaming it over Pandora or whatever streaming service you use and you go, you know, this just doesn't sound as good as it did at home. An epicenter can help with that. Um, it's also just kind of fun to have, you know, I mean, we're, we're all in car audio because it's fun, right? I mean, it's enjoyable. Um, we're not selling boring stuff here. We're selling fun, cool stuff that we all love. Uh, if you are in this because you love music and you like to hear things the way you want to hear them, chances are this is going to be really fun for you to listen to. And what I mean by that is, you know, sometimes you're cruising down the freeway and it's a sunny day and you got your windows down and that certain song comes on, hey, this is my jam, and you're turning up the volume. And maybe it still just doesn't quite have that impact you were hoping for it to have. A, a quarter turn of an epicenter knob could make that song so much more enjoyable. And even if you only, you know, use it every so often to just add a little bit of impact, that's okay. That's still fun to listen to, you know? It's like Insta Bass. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> right? Insta Bass. Insta on demand. Bass. We should, we should patent bass. that. I like that. Insta I'm going to have to trademark that. You ever feel like you're a little short on bass? Just reach for the Insta Bass, bro. Insta Bass. Uh, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's um, what we other, should call the bass knob that comes with it. It should right? just say Insta, Insta Bass. bass. Insta I like bass. it. Uh, two I more like questions it. for you. So yeah. I know it's an old school design and it's OG. OG. 
-hmm. Does it have um, added benefits, anything along the lines of line conditioning, preamplification, anything of that nature? Or is it truly just an inline uh, processor for one purpose? So it, it is an inline processor that can, that can you know, digitally restore base. However, it does have some cool features in there as well. For example, um, inside of an epicenter, when you take the top cover plate off, there's some little jumper settings in there. One of those jumper settings is to actually limit the output voltage of the unit. Um, and the reason it's, it's a limit, people look at it and they think that it's actually a um, line driver. An, an epicenter is not yeah. a line driver. Okay, it's not uh, a line driver. Okay. It is not a line driver. It is actually a limiter that's in there. And the reason we do that is, you know, a lot of amplifiers that are out there, unfortunately, don't take in super high line voltage. So if you look at your amplifier and you look at the specs and see that RCA line level in can only handle, you know, four volts or five volts or something like that, we don't want to overdrive that input by running 10 volts of boosted signal in there. So if your amplifier can only handle, say, four or five volts, we want to make sure that inside the epicenter, we're setting that voltage uh, regulator, let's call it, uh, to, you know, a five volt setting or something close to what that amp can handle. That way we don't overdrive the input and make it sound goofy and distorted, right? Um, so uh, that's in there. The other thing that's inside of an epicenter is the balanced and unbalanced inputs, which can really help with noise sometimes. So, you know, if you've got some sort of weird ground loop or something going on where you're getting a, a hum or a buzz or some sort of strange noise, um, the, the, uh, balance and unbalanced settings inside there can help with that a lot of times. Cool. cool. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, I did have a comment come in through Facebook. They're wondering sure. if there's going to be a Canadian edition where it's actually spelled properly. Properly? No. Yeah. No, Matt has center, no idea what I'm referring to. <laughs> no, I don't. We, we, we spell center, you know, C E N T R E. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Just like it's a processor and not a processor. Or, yeah, or a Z and Z, you know, anyhow. Like ZZ top. Mobile yeah. and mobile. Yeah. Uh, okay. that's, that's a good one, though. So, <clears throat> so we, we, uh, you had mentioned just a little bit before uh, we just dove into all these details. New product, new product yes. alert. It's coming down the pipe. You uh, let's go, let's get back to that. Awesome. So, um, you know, we've talked about how this is not just for, uh, you know, aftermarket systems and things like that, and how there's all these newer vehicles now where we need something like this in those systems. Well, currently, if you, let's say, have the car I used as an example a minute ago, let's say you have a 2018 base model Honda Accord and you go, oh, great, you know, I want to put in a system in my car and uh, I, I want to make sure I have an epicenter in there. Currently, what that's going to take is some sort of a high to low adapter, probably one of these up here, you know, maybe an LC 1i, 2i, 2i Pro, something like that. Um, so you've got your line output converter, which is taking in your high level signal and giving you a low level RCA signal. Uh, but now you would need that and then feed your signal from that into your epicenter and then out of your epicenter into your amplifier. It's a, it's a two-step, two-piece. It, it's a two-piece process. And and the thing that becomes confusing there for a lot of guys is if they're using a 2i or a 2i Pro, those products have AccuBase built into them. And in this case, we don't actually need the AccuBase. It, you could use AccuBase and epicenter at the same time, but it's not a great idea. You have two base processing circuits working at the same time, and it's just, it's not ideal. And so <clears throat> that's sometimes consuming, uh, confusing, especially for consumers putting in their own systems. They don't always understand the difference between AccuBase can and you Epicenter. Take a, can you take this moment and explain the quickly difference between oh, AccuBase versus sure. what the Epicenter does? Yeah, so AccuBase is, um, A, it's a feature. AccuBase is built into a lot of our products, but you can't buy AccuBase by itself. It's not a product, it's okay. a feature. Um, also, AccuBase is basically a, uh, it's a base compensation circuit, let's call it. So when you have one of these radios where, let's say your radio goes from volume zero to volume 100, and at volume 70, let's say the bass doesn't get any louder. So from volume 70 to volume 100, the bass stays the same. That's what I would call bass plateau or bass roll off, some people will call it. Mm. Now, if you put in an aftermarket amplifier and subwoofer in that vehicle and you tune it, um, the best you're going to come out with is that it sounds 
okay at mid volume. At anything above mid volume, you'll have not enough bass. And at low volumes, you'll have way too much bass. It just doesn't sound right. It's completely backwards from what you would want it to sound like. And so AccuBase was intended to compensate for that area where the bass plateaus. So let's say you did put in an LC2i in that vehicle. What you'd end up with is consistent bass output from volume zero to volume 100, the way that you would expect it to work with an aftermarket radio. So it really kind of gets rid of that problem that a lot of factory radios have. And if you're wondering, well, why would they build that into a radio? Why do they make the bass stop at a certain volume? <laughs> it's to protect factory speakers. Um, yeah. Manufacturers got tired of replacing factory, you know, they're cheap paper speakers in most cars. They got tired of replacing those under warranty and having customers blow up speakers, um, especially as, you know, today's music has gotten more and more bass heavy. Uh, I mean, you listen to even modern country, a genre that generally is not regarded as having a lot of bass. Modern country has a lot of bass, right? Um, and so, you know, manufacturers started building that in to roll off that bass. Well, that's what AccuBase was built to, you know, uh, compensate for. Whereas the Epicenter puts bass back in where there was none. You know, AccuBase is restoring bass that's lost due to factory processing. Uh, epicenter is putting bass back in that is completely gone, whether that's because the music doesn't have any, the streaming service cut it off, uh, or, you know, your radio is permanently high passed, like some of the examples we've been talking about. So that's the difference between the two. You, you made me think of a funny scenario about how factory, you know, is trying to protect their speakers, but how many times we rented a car and one of the first things you do is you crank the treble and bass all the way to max. <laughs> you would never do that in your own car, but you would do it on a rental car. Or, or, or it's already, already uh, cranked. It's already yeah, cranked. Already cranked yeah. You go to set settings, oh, this is max. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, please proceed. Yeah, so so that's where um, this new piece, the Epicenter Micro, really comes into play is – you know, what we wanted to do was make a product that would allow people in these uh, scenarios that need an epicenter, but they also need some of those other features. And so what I'm going to do is, uh, let's see here if I can switch my camera real quick. I think I can give you a better view of the epicenter what is this micro Ooh. this is the epicenter micro so the micro is our newest piece in the epicenter family and i'm going to grab an lc2i pro just as reference for size Let's see here if i can get these centered there we go so you can see oh, wow. just how mm. small that thing is it's actually smaller than an lc2i pro so if we compare a original epicenter to an epicenter micro wow, original about original. Yeah, about half the size, you know, so it is really a huge, huge difference. So the micro has a couple of cool features and um, there's a lot of neat things built into this guy. Uh, you'll notice that all of our switches and settings are all exposed right on the front. So this is not a product where you're going to need to take the top cover plate off or anything like that. This is a piece where everything is exposed right here. So the easiest way to really think of this is that it's like an LC2i Pro, but instead of having AccuBase, it has Epicenter. Mm. That's the easiest way to think of it. Because this is a, uh, it's got high level inputs, it's got low level inputs, we've got our RCA outputs. It is literally just like an LC2i Pro. We even have a couple of things that are found on the 2i Pro. And let me get pretty close here for a second. We have our load select, meaning we have all of our LGDs built in. We have our new trigger modes for turning it on. We have ground isolation for isolating noise. Our PFM filter is disableable <laughs> or able to be disabled uh, on this product as well. And then that output voltage is down there on the end. Uh, and our epicenter controls are right there in the middle. So it is literally a full featured epicenter uh, just in a micro chassis, but also with a basically an LC2i Pro built inside, if you want to so, think of it that way. So same thing with the very high voltage input capability. Yep. Uh, like the yep. So LC2i. 40 volts of... 40 yep, volts, 40 in. volts of uh, available input there. So even if it's a vehicle with factory amplifier in it, mm -hmm. you don't have to worry about finding a dumbed down signal somewhere in the car. You can actually grab signal straight from the output of that factory amplifier and feed it right into these high uh, high level inputs. And this thing's going to be able to handle that and and you know make it usable for you, no problem. And the voltage output. 
Uh, voltage output on this, it's going to depend on, on what's coming in, basically. Oh, okay. But we can get, you know, up to about 10 volts of output out of a uh, Epicenter Micro. When you compare that side by side, you know, there's the old school Epicenter just in white uh, yep. over there. Wow. It, hard to believe that that technology is now crammed into that little box there. And, it really plus is. More. It's plus almost more, like the right? Motorola brick versus a, a modern smartphone right there. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And one of the things that also makes this kind of special and I'm, I'm super excited about because I've just been asked about it so many times at so many shows, you know, I'm at Knowledge Fest or SEMA or whatever show, and I keep getting asked by certain uh, stereo shops and customers, hey, when are you guys ever going to make an epicenter that can be used in my side by side? When are you going to make an epicenter that I can put on my boat or on my, you know, Harley or whatever it is? Well, one of the things that we did with the Epicenter Micro was do a conformally coated PC board, which means it's going to be corrosion resistant. Um, you know, it's not waterproof by any means, but it can handle the moisture and maybe a splash or something a lot better than a original Epicenter ever could. And there were guys that were putting the original Epicenter on, but sadly, the moisture, maybe in a couple of years or something like yeah. that, you might have a failure. So that's going to be a big bonus. And, yeah. and the size. Look how tiny that thing is, you know? It's not Yeah, the size this is going to be anymore. easy to hide just about anywhere. You know, I mean, if you're doing uh, OEM integration install and you're just adding a amp and sub, but hey, I'm working on one of these cars that I noticed has no base below a certain point, this would be your integration solution. You no longer would need an LC2i uh, or 1i or whatever your, you know, LOC of choice is. You won't need an LOC plus an epicenter. You could just use an epicenter micro and you're good to go. Um, so really some cool stuff. And when I mentioned that there's load select built into this or LGDs built in, uh, maybe some viewers out there don't understand what that is or what I'm talking about exactly. Um, uh, just the, the quick version of that is that there's a lot of vehicles out there today where the factory head unit or amplifier requires that there's some sort of an impedance load shown on the outputs. So it basically needs to see the factory speakers are connected or else it won't put out sound or it'll distort or do some other goofy stuff. And so audio control came up with something called the LGDs. Those are these little uh, colored pieces here. We offer three different variations of them. This isn't an LGD uh, training today, so we won't go too deep into it, but all three versions of these are built into this new Epicenter Micro is switch. what I'm getting at. On a switch. Yep, yep exactly. Nice. So all you have to do is flip nice. the switch to the appropriate setting for the vehicle you're working on, and you're good to go. You don't have to worry about ordering extra parts or anything like that. Two questions nothing. for you. Oh, sorry, go ahead. go ahead. No, no, I was just gonna say nothing's more frustrating than working on a vehicle and having yep. that factor radio going to protection. And oh. then you've got a, a hardwire in little resistors. And they don't even do the same thing that an LGD does because an LGD also does filtering uh, as well. So that's an awesome yeah. feature built into those. Yeah, just on the It switch. really is. Yeah. Uh, two, two, two questions real quick for you, Matt. Uh, yeah. Number one, is there a remote knob even on the micro? There is. So the epicenter has always um, came with a epicenter control. It's 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 an essential piece. You need to be able to control how much epicenter effect is happening from song to song. Um, like I mentioned, maybe some songs you don't need it at all. So you're turning it all the way down. Maybe some songs you need quite a bit, depending on the type of music or whatever. So the epicenter has always come with a uh, controller, but the, you know, a, a common, I don't want to say complaint, but a common note that we get from uh, installers and consumers alike is that they don't love the fact that they have to put in their epicenter knob and their amps base knob because the epicenter knob is doing epicenter effect. The base knob is doing overall mm, sub level. Right. right. You kind of need both. And so we understood that that's a problem and it is kind of cumbersome to have two knobs installed. It's, it's just not ideal. So what we came up with is something called the ACR four. Uh, I'll switch cameras again here so that guys can see it a little bit better. And the ACR4 is actually a dual concentric knob. So you'll see that there is a outer ring and an inner knob there. Now this is able to be taken apart and flush mounted as well. So for my installers out there watching this that wanna take this and flush mount it so it's just the knob itself, you absolutely can do that. Um, this is gonna come with every Epicenter Micro. And although it seems like a really small thing to be able to do, it's actually a big deal being able to go, okay, I have sub level on this inner knob and I have epicenter effect on this outer knob. It's really pretty cool. Uh, help me understand how that works because how are you getting the control of the bass volume wise with that sure. knob? 
So what we're doing is we're actually controlling the signal that's passing through our epicenter micro. So if you have even just RCA in, RCA out, let's say you even have an aftermarket radio, um, we can control that overall output level with that main volume knob in the middle. And then this outer one is set up to just control our epicenter effect. So if you put the outer knob all the way down and just use the inner knob, then it's working as if you didn't have an epicenter at all. And it's just working as a sub control, just like you would get with any, you know, or most amplifiers. Gotcha. Nifty. And that's yeah, included in the box with the micro. It is indeed. Is that available as a separate piece if I have an older epicenter? Or if I want to use my anniversary piece? Uh, it won't work with other products. It has to be a product that was designed with the ACR4 in mind. So gotcha. legacy products like a traditional epicenter or a you know LC2i or whatever other product you might want to use it with, it is not set up to work with those. It's not backwards compatible. Um, okay. However, that being said, we are, our engineering team is working on uh, our products going forward having compatibility with the ACR4. So we will have them available separately for somebody that loses or breaks theirs or something like that with their epicenter micro. And in the future, we will start to see, you know, maybe a revised version of a uh, LC7i or something like that, that would work with an ACR4. So it's, we're headed in that direction, but at launch time, these two will just work together. Without getting into specific numbers, I'm just from a value perspective, when you're looking at yeah. the micro, if you take the value of, let's say, an LC2i and you add it to the price of episode, I'm going to guess that this is actually going to be less, I'm guessing. Considerably. Considerably. Oh, considerably. So there are savings mm -hmm. involved uh, by purchasing the new micro. Okay. Yep. Yep. Good to know. Absolutely. You know, here's my recommendation. I mean, you know, if you're a retailer, for example, I mean, I think every retailer is always trying to maximize the sales to a consumer you know uh, getting the best quality you know rcas as possible power cable and all that type of stuff and deep down inside we know that that makes a performance difference but to a consumer it's not demonstrable right here's a piece of hardware that you can put in and the consumer can instantly hear the difference before and after it's the and base. It's, it's yeah the exactly base. you know it's you, you, before and after and it's mm -hmm. it's uh, real time highly real effective time. In their car, like yep. literally, literally, no, totally, absolutely. You know, yeah, and, and accessory you know, just to to make the overall experience, you know, that much better. Yeah, if you're sure. if you're a retailer watching this and you're looking for, you know, when a customer comes back in, maybe they're coming back in for, you know, something simple, whatever, um, but they've already got a whole system in their car, and you've kind of, you know, the system's done. You've kind of run out of things to to, you know, uh, upgrade them with. An epicenter is always something you can kind of sprinkle on to just about any system and make it better or more enjoyable. Um, you know, even in an existing system that was a really nice setup with very high quality products and components put in there could still benefit from an epicenter. Um, and like I mentioned, you know, is the guy going to use it every single day? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe he only uses it once a month when he's by himself in the car uh, and the wife and kids aren't in there and he wants to jam out a little bit. Hey, great. For that one day a month, though, that he got to use it, it made his experience that much more enjoyable. And I mean, that's what we're all about is just making the whole music listening experience more enjoyable. And what an easy thing to be able to add to an existing setup to make it better. It just so illustrates how important, you know, we're, we're talking about technology, we're talking about new product, but, you mm -hmm. know, linking the sale to this is so important to probe that customer. You know, if you're talking yep. with the customer, you can probe them what type of music they listen to, which all salespeople should, by the way, uh, before, you know, recommending product. Um, and, you know, the guy comes to you and he's talking like disco and he's talking like 70s classic rock. Man, this is like an easy sale. Oh, yeah. It's yeah, like, that's a no-brainer. Oh, you need this, sir. You, you have to have yeah. this. Why? Well, you just told me this is the type of music you listen to, and you're spending all this money on gear to put two dots together, and it's an easy sale. Yeah, you want to have something yeah. in your store that's a powerful demo, something that will close mm, probably yes. you know 90% of the people that listen to it. Put an epicenter in your sound room and demo it for them. You know, Show them how it sounds with the epicenter. Ask them one of their favorite songs. Play their favorite song regardless of genre, play their favorite song and use the epicenter at like a quarter turn, just a little bit and have them listen to it. And of course they're going to say, wow, you know, if your sound room sounds good, they're going to say, wow, this sounds awesome. And then turn the epicenter all the way down and they're going to say, oh, what happened? You know, kind of like you do when you try to sell a subwoofer, you always show them a system with base. a subwoofer mm -hmm. and then you take the subwoofer away. You can do that same 
same style of sale, but with an epicenter. Show it to them with the epicenter, take the epicenter out of it temporarily and go, look, I, you know, this is what we're listening to. And they're going to go, yeah, I need that. You know, I want one of those. When you write up my quote, make sure that's in there. Yeah, exactly. Dave, this, yeah. this reminds me of a Dynamat session that we did where it's one of those things, price per value that you're going to sell or demo to a customer that makes instant and, and remarkable, noticeable difference. Yeah. A hundred percent. And, you know, the guy will feel that his money is well spent at the end of the day. It's not, mm -hmm. well, you know, I, I forked out more money for that pure copper kit, but did I get hosed on that? You know, like, because they have no reference to go yep. back on, yep, right? right? They have no, Absolutely. You know. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, and, and even with sound deadening, you know, I sold a lot of sound deadening. I love sound deadening in my own vehicles, but it's one of those things where they don't know what the system would have sounded like without it necessarily. You know, depending on on the order of how things were sold. But if you sell it all together as a package, it's a great thing to include. Every system should have it, but they don't necessarily know. Like Dave said, was that five hundred dollars worth of sound deadening worth it? I don't know. My car doesn't rattle, so it right. must be worth it, right. you know? Right. Yeah. Um, but in this case, I mean, they can instantly twist a knob and know what the product is doing. And hear yeah, the I, I, I was referring to if uh, on a proper demo, like, you know, if you demo have board, board, you show a demo display. board and you show the difference between, you know, yeah. a yeah. little speaker install with and without that, you can hear it. Right? Yeah, Friendly, absolutely. You know? That's what I meant. Yep. This is a little bit more dramatic, albeit. Uh, sure. with, the, with the base with the with the epicenter but and just, just to the point are these i'm trying to get dealers who are listening to this to understand that these are little tips and tricks that can give mm -hmm. you a little extra sale without a lot of effort yeah so, demos okay. are important and that's one of those things that i actually see uh, a surprising amount when i go out and travel and visit stereo shops out there is um how many of them really don't do a great demo and in my opinion, if there's anything you need to be good at uh, to be do well in this industry, you need to give a good demo. Because if they just wanted to come in and talk product or look at something in a catalog, let's be honest, they could have done that online. They could have read reviews. They could have looked at pictures. They could have, you know, maybe even saw really good images of it up close. If all they wanted to do was see it, they could have done that themselves. They came in because they want your advice. They want your expertise. They want the experience. They want that shopping experience. And if we're going to deliver that, part of delivering that is a good demo. You know, I mean, imagine an Apple store if they didn't have any phones and, and laptops on display. Imagine if they just had pictures of them they showed you in a catalog. There's a reason there's like 30 iMacs in front of you. Exactly. You there's a reason them. that you go in there and, and play with the phones and touch tablets and all that stuff. There's a reason that that stuff exists, you know, because it works. Same reason Absolutely. that a stereo shop should have a great demo. Okay, Matt, Matt, quick question for you. Yeah. Is this got the same type of warranty as the rest of audio control products? That's a really good point, Dave. Yes, uh, this has a five year warranty on it when it's installed wow. by an authorized wow. audio control dealer, just like everything else from audio control five years across the board. Very, very slick. Um, just to recap, guys, we're almost out of time. Let's go back a little bit. Amazing achievement with a million. I repeat a million epicenter sold so congratulations to audio control for that in celebration uh, and acknowledgement of such a feat there is the limited edition 5000 run audio control epicenter which will be available when uh we're hoping to start shipping those here in the next couple of months so we're going to start taking pre-orders for them here very soon and then uh the the shipments and orders and stuff should follow shortly after that so i don't want to be too specific but i would say here in the next couple of months you'll start seeing those out in the wild well, in Canada, you want to make sure you get a hold of Gemsen. They, yep. According to Dave, they've got a few uh, kind of reserved for the Canadian market. So make sure you get mm -hmm. a hold of Dave and uh, order yours and make sure that you are accounted for for that. Um, and then we went through all the cool features of that limited edition, right? The LED, the blue LED lights, the cool graphics, spike on the, the whole nine yards. And obviously the, what did you say, black motherboard? Yeah, black PC board, uh, oh, certificate cool. of authenticity. It's also going to come in a, in a totally different uh, special edition box and packaging and all that stuff. Um, so it's 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 a, it's the whole package and numbered. Yes, they're numbered. individually laser etched, uh, numbered right on the front of them from uh, uh, zero to five thousand. Okay, and from there, new product. Um, Epicenter Micro, which uh, we just went through all the great features of such a small footprint on top of that. Um, and, and what are timelines on that unit? Uh, about the same. Those will follow right after the Epicenter Limited Edition. So the whole idea was to kind of do the Limited Edition at the end of the summer here, uh, and then kind of on the coattails of that, release the newest member of the Epicenter family, which is the Epicenter Micro. 
So that'll be, again, uh, I would call it, I guess, early fall is a good way to describe that. Perfect. So these are 2021 products. That's great to see. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Any, la any last message you, uh, you'd like to convey, Mr. Palumbo? Uh, I think we really kind of covered everything. I mean, uh, um, if anybody's got any questions or anything like that, we have some great resources out there. You know, we've done a lot of trainings on a lot of the things that we touched on today. You know, if we touched on something today that you maybe, uh, you know, are like, hey, what, what was that thing he said about load generating and LGD? What was all that about? Um, the Audio Control YouTube channel has all of our old, uh, I don't want to say old, but all of our previous um, weekly trainings we did all throughout the summer uh, this last year. We did like 27 weeks of training. Um, all of those are recorded. We still do a once a month training. We, we pick a topic each month and do about an hour on it once a month. Check out our Facebook page for when those are going to be happening. And then, um, yeah, with the uh, YouTube channel, all of those things are recorded and put on there. So if you you know want to spend a little bit of time and learn more about LGDs or more about the Epicenter, we have done entire hours on just each of those topics. So feel free to check out the uh, YouTube channel uh, or our Facebook Facebook page, etc. There's a lot of good resources if you want to learn more about something we touched on today. On that note, and speaking about good resources, how about a great resource in Matthew Palumbo from Audio Control. Matt, thank you so much for joining us today, man. My pleasure. Thanks, it was a good time. It was fun. Thank you. All Appreciate right. Take it. care of yourself. We'll see you soon. All right. Thanks, guys. Take care. Uh, are you getting one? If you get one, I'll get one. I'm definitely got, getting one. I, 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 I want to request a special number, though. I, you know, I, but uh, I don't know. You want 69, don't you? Zero, 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 six, I know you. <laughs> I want Apparently, eight, eight. it's highly in demand. Uh, I'm told, Ma Matthew, I'm... I know you're still listening backstage. I want 888. Eight, eight. Put that on the side. Oh, I'm not going to say the reason why because then I, I will get in trouble. But right. uh, nowadays, you know, that's that's some super exciting stuff. And, and uh, you know, if you're a dealer, I would say mm -hmm. reach out to us and say, hey, I want to put an epicenter on my board. And, you know, we will hook you up with a great deal to make it happen. Is there a demo um, deal for that? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, cool. there's a, you know, so reach out to us and we'll get you set up. And uh, I believe by Monday, our website will allow uh, you to back order um, the limited edition piece. Okay? You so go. you can you can get your name in early and not be disappointed because we're only going to get a few hundred of these things and they're going to disappear really fast really fast yeah you know i wasn't sure going into them but then i saw spike on them like yeah that just did, did me in cool. <laughs> anyhow um and let's you know real quick on that new micro piece i mean that is a really nice evolution of proven technology kind of combined into a small footprint well it brings you up to dealing with today's modern cars and the challenge that we have to do the low generating device is incredible in itself built in switchable yeah, you know, uh, if you look at each one of those little LGDs that Matt was showing, you know, and, you know, three of them are almost the size of the the, the micro. And the cost of those things is usually around like $50, well, you know, you know, if you're buying in the have, store. Yeah, the shop has to have LC1, 2, and then have those on the side. And really, that that one box does it all, doesn't it? And then so. It, it does it all. And I'm really excited that, you know, the Power Sports guys are now going to be mm. able to get you know, a little bit more base. And, you know, we didn't really get into some of those other markets that are out there, but, you know, there's a high SPL market where guys are using pro drive, excuse me, pro drivers, um, you know, and um, if you're in that arena and you like to play in that world, I mean, <laughs> you like it loud. Epicenter is a product for you, no doubt. Uh, you know, there's a lot of guys spending big money on big, you know, side-by-side -side kits, and yeah, it's open air. So you need that base if you want to really enjoy it, right? I mean, that, I think that's the goal. So very excited to see where this goes and what the feedback will be from dealers as uh, the launch, you know, as this product gets into installs and we'll, we'll see, we'll follow that closely. Great stuff. Thanks so much for today. That was a cool one. I wasn't sure what to expect at first, but I'm really happy we did that. Lots of exciting stuff from, coming from the audio control camp. Dave, always a pleasure, man. Enjoy your weekend. Take care. You too. Everybody. Have a great one. Take care. There you have it, the whole story from Audio Control and the Epicenter um, limited edition coming out. Make sure you get yours. And uh, obviously that really cool new small footprint um, Epicenter micro piece. It's an all-in type of situation. I have no doubt that's going to be a pretty popular deal. Of course, one, once again, reminding you, if you're, looking, if you're watching this on demand, um, get a hold of Jemson. 
exclusive distributor for audio control here in Canada. That's it for me, man. I hope you guys have a great weekend. We got another big week next week. We're coming back at you with three different connecteds, uh, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And, and you know what? Something we announced today. Go check out our brand new video on demand channels off CanadianMobileAudio.com. You can't miss the bun. Over 200 hours. We've been doing this for a year now. We've actually produced over 200 hours of training content, product content. Go check it out. It's all categorized through all the brands and distribution um, there for you to watch and get your team caught up to speed and trained so you know what's going on. Hey, I'm your host, Ben Wu, for another episode of CMA Connected presented by SiriusXM. Hoping everybody has a great weekend. We'll see you on Monday. Until next time, we connect. Mm -hmm.